Okay. Um, I don't check my hair before these. <laughs> All right, so my name is Heather Rodriguez, and today I'm going to be talking about the endocrine system and fertility. So this is a major part in fertility health. So you hear a lot of people talk about like the root, um, the root cause, or supporting the root issue, or helping to support the um, the system. You hear all these different terms in natural health. So. The endocrine system is a major part when it comes to fertility health. So I want to start educating on that more and why it's important. So let's first talk about what the endocrine system is. This is a series of glands that are in the body that produce different hormones. And hormones are communication signals basically in the body. So it tells the body what to do is the control center, especially as it pertains to a lot of the functions um, and reactions that the body has. So for instance, the endocrine system um, has an effect on the respiration, controls metabolism, controls reproduction, um, sensory perception, movement, sexual development, and growth. So not all of these obviously pertain to fertility, but these are kind of like the master glands that are giving off signals and orchestrating our hormonal health and what's happening within our bodies. So here are some of the main hormone producing glands. They are the hypothalamus. Um, this is part of what is responsible for body temperature, um, for hunger, moods, uh, the release of hormones from the other glands. So this is like one of the master glands. It helps control thirst, sleep, and sex drive. So for those who are trying to um, lose weight, um, for those who are constantly having low um, temperature, the help with thalamus is one of the glands that are going to be involved. The next is going to be the pituitary gland, right? We've all heard of these, but do we actually know what they do? Um, pituitary gland is considered the master gland. So this is the gland that controls all the other glands and that makes the hormones it makes hormones that trigger growth. So they're going, it's going to tell um, all the other glands what to do and when to do it. So we definitely want the pituitary uh, to be supported when you are working on the root cause or the foundation for hormonal health. Um, the parathyroid, this is a gland that controls the amount of calcium in the body. Um, the pancreas, uh, this gland produces insulin that helps control blood sugar levels. So this does pertain to fertility, especially with those um, with any type of insulin resistance, PCOS, uh, blood sugar type issues, that has a direct effect, um, direct causing effect on hormonal health. Uh, thyroid, right? How many here um, have need extra thyroid support. This is something that's huge um, with a lot of the women that I speak with is thyroid. And thyroid, I think one of the reasons we're having so many issues with thyroid is because of our environmental um, things that we're exposed to on a continuous basis. Another topic that I will go into more detail on, um, but the thyroid produces hormones that are associated with metabolism, calorie burning, heart rate, um, body temperature. Uh, there's a lot of different things that the thyroid is kind of out of balance that will affect so many other areas. None of these stand alone. So an issue in one of these uh, has a rippling effect in other areas. The next is the adrenal glands, right? We've all heard of like adrenal fatigue. Um, this is something that's been a little bit more prominent in the last you know, five years in the natural health world because we all work so much. Um, and the adrenal glands are what produces the hormones that control sex drive, cortisol, and stress hormones. So when we're constantly under stress, constantly pre overproducing those hormones because we're constantly stimulated by stress, the adrenal glands can become burnt out. They can become depleted. Um, the pineal gland, this is the gland that produces melatonin, which affects sleep. Now, melatonin has a big effect on a lot of different areas of our health beyond sleep, but it's most famous for um, that effect and that feeling of falling asleep is melatonin. Um, the ovaries, right? Did you know the ovaries are part of the endocrine system? Ovaries um, secrete estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, uh, the main female sex hormones. Um, there's a couple other glands that are going to be involved with that, but um, that's what part of what the ovaries do. And then the testes in men are the ovary equivalent. Um, they produce male sex hormones, as testosterone, and they also produce sperm. So a lot of these glands are what we actually need to be supporting. So when I'm working with women on their fertility, a lot of times our first initial interaction and conversation will be, I have low FSH. I'm not ovulating. My progesterone is low. My estrogen is high. It'll be a very specific outcome that we're talking about, or my periods are, are missing. Um, so there's this specific outcome that we're talking about, which is the tip of the iceberg. And down here, like you've seen those pictures, right? Where it's a picture of an iceberg. Here's the water. You just see the tiny tip of the iceberg, but underneath it is this whole huge iceberg, right? So that's 
down here is going to be the endocrine system and kind of what we need to do to help support those glands. Because if we're just focused on producing more progesterone, say, and we're like, okay, let's add progesterone. And that's the only thing we do, but we're not looking at supporting the glands that are responsible for communication of production, for actual production of progesterone, um, for the whole feedback loop and the steps before progesterone even needs to be produced, because progesterone would be produced if you're not ovulating. And if you're not ovulating, then there's some other hormonal things happening. There's this whole cascade of events. So when I'm putting together programs um, to help support and educate um, women on this, I'm always including support for the endocrine system in one way or the other. We aren't necessarily supporting every single gland at all times. Um, but there's generally some type of element where we are supporting the pituitary, where we are supporting the thyroid, where we are supporting the adrenals, um, and so forth. And the ovaries, obviously, um, a lot of what we do supports the ovaries, but there's this whole communication feedback loop that's called the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian access. And this is this communication loop that's happening between those glands, um, for specific sex hormone production, fertility hormone production. So, when you're putting together a plan or you're you're working on supporting yourself and supporting your fertility, taking steps to support these glands is going to be very important. So I wanted to talk about that today so that you understood kind of the beginning of what that means and how you can support the endocrine system. Now, that probably sounded a little bit co complicated <laughs> and a little bit sciencey, but I think it's really important when we're taking steps for our health to understand why some of these things that sound really basic that we're doing how they can have an effect and why they're important. So for instance, I'll always be talking about like the important five or adding more vegetables to your diet or adding more fiber or more antioxidant rich foods. Well, there's actually a way bigger reason I'm talking about that all the time because we want to flood our body with these antioxidants for anti-inflammatory support or we're wanting to make sure we have a lot of antioxidants for egg support or making sure we have enough fiber so that the body can metabolize and get rid of excess hormones. There's always a reason I'm talking about these very simple things over and over again. So a lot of these things can pertain to the endocrine system. And I'm going to go into much greater detail on what that is and how to do that. Um, in my upcoming class, I'm doing this Wednesday. I still have to figure out a name for it, but it's basically the endocrine system and fertility. And what we're going to go into is in great greater depth on how to get to the cause, the root of what's going on, especially for those exp um, having unexplained um, fertility um, who have been trying for a period of time and everything kind of seems normal. These are the areas that I definitely want to support. So that's what we're going to be going over in that class. You can go ahead and um, send me a DM for that link or go to my stories. There will be a link there. Um, I can put the link right here for you guys on Instagram or I'm sorry, on um, YouTube and Facebook. I'll just put the link right in there for you. But we're going to go in depth on what you can do, different areas um, that pertain to that, especially the five pillars. So I talk about the five pillars a lot because those are the types of steps that help to control or help to support these different systems. It's a daily way to support your body. All right, here's the link, guys. Um, there you go. So that's what I'll be teaching on Wednesday. Now, this is something that is when you kind of don't know what's going on your cycle is is like kind of seems really normal you're regularly ovulating or you've been trying for a while and you feel like you've done all the things this is an area to look at so that you can really understand and know how to support the entire endocrine system because if these are depleted like that's what i find a lot is depletion so um some people talk about uh, having um high you know there's something going on with their pituitary or their thyroid they have um thyroid hormone is not being absorbed by the body or they're burnt out, they're feeling really tired all the time from the adrenals or their hands and feet are cold all the time. We wanna support these systems because if these systems aren't supported, they're not gonna produce the hormones that we need. And we need these hormones in order to have these functions such as ovulation, healthy uterine lining, uh, sustaining a healthy pregnancy, we need all of those things to be in place. So when you just go straight for, and I'm not against medical fertility treatments, but when you just go straight for them and you haven't prepared your system and you're going to do something that gives a real push um, within that month to get pregnant, like you're going to, uh, you know, um, have a lot of eggs stimulated for retrieval or um, you're just doing this real big push. You want to make sure that these your endocrine system is prepared and healthy for that, um, because there's going to be a lot of extra push that's done on that system that doesn't happen during a normal cycle during a normal month that would be without the medications. So that's something else to think about is just fortifying your body and preparing your system um, for a greater push that um, the medications will be. 
um, bringing about. So there you go. That's my two cents on the endocrine system and the importance of it. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful, but I'm going to go into this much deeper because it's a big topic. <laughs> there's entire, you know, you could take, there's semesters on this topic. Um, I'm going to simplify it as much as I can and keep it very specific to fertility. But if you're feeling like tired all the time, your hair is falling out, you're, um, you're not getting good sleep, your, your hormones are off, the endocrine system is where all of this begins. So something's off, something needs to be um, supported, nourished, all of those things. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I will put the links up and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.